Hey guys, we are on chapter 24, the last chapter of the book of Luke. You guys have made it, you read it, so God, let's dig into Easter Sunday, right? Uh, so it says, uh, but on the first day of the week, that Sunday, right? Remember, um, uh, Sabbat, Sabbath is on Saturday, Passover was Friday, um, and so Jesus was crucified Thursday afternoon, um, but Thursday at 6.01 p.m. starts the Passover, goes to 6 p.m. of Friday, which started Sabbat, Sabbath, um, which happens weekly. That goes to Saturday at, uh, it goes to Saturday night at 6 p.m. And so as the sun rises, um, we start the new day on Sunday, right? So first day of the week. Uh, they went to the tomb, all the women. Remember, the women followed Joseph, saw where the tomb was at. They knew what was at. They went home to prepare spices. Now the Passover is done. The Sabbath, Sabbath is over. And so now they're coming back on Sunday to put the spices uh, and the things around him, finish uh, the process of the burial. Uh, and th then they got there. And what happens? The stone is rolled away. Um, we don't read it in Luke, but in the other... Um, in Matthew, we know that there was a uh, 16 soldiers that was put there. Uh, there was a seal um, put on the tomb. All that is gone. The stones rolled away. Um, but they go in and they do not find the body of the Lord. In verse 4, we see this magical word. Uh, it says, behold. This is the what we call an angel word. It calls the Christmas word, right? And behold, there were angels. Behold, two men stood in dazzling apparel. Of course, they were angels. Um, and they were enough that just like Mary, just like Zachariah, just like Joseph in his dreams, uh, when these angels appeared, they were frightened and they bowed their faces. So they knew they were, they were a messenger of God of some sort. And they asked the best, um, easiest question, why do you seek the living among the dead? Um, it, it's almost, almost funny when you think about it that the angels know the resurrection story uh they they knew what was going to happen before jesus went they know that jesus told um the women they told the disciples he told lots of people exactly what was going to happen but nobody believed in what jesus was talking about and so um they say why do you seek the living amongst the dead he is not here he's risen remember how he told you luke chapter 18 that what that he was going to be in galilee um, that he would meet you again in Galilee. And as the angels are saying this, verse 8, this is why we should read the Bible, um, they remembered his words. Uh, you might not memorize the whole Bible, but at least when you hear God's word, you can remember parts of it and realize, oh, this is true, this is happening. They remember what God has said, and so um, they go uh, to tell the disciples. It says that they told these things to the apostles, verse 11 but these words seem like them to an idle tale. Um, in the Greek, that word where it says idle tale, it means the babbling of an insane person. That's really what it means. It means as if they were just talking crazy. Um, just, blah, 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 blah. you know, it's just kind of this, this crazy talk. And they did not believe them. The, the, the disciples, the apostles, they did not believe them. And so Peter ran, we see in John, um, the book of John, uh, that Peter and John both ran to the tomb looking to go in, um, but they went home marveling, still not believing, marveling what had happened, trying to figure out what happened to Jesus's body. And then we come to probably my favorite story in all of the Gospels, um, the road to Emmaus, two disciples um, now, these are not like the, like the 12 disciples. These are just two followers that we have not seen until this story. And you will never see again after this story. Um, you know, they're just not important. They're not, they're just two believers of Jesus. Um, one is Cleopas. The other one is uh, Simon. And these two are walking. And for some reason, we have no idea why, um, but Jesus... Uh, Jesus comes to them, but he kept them from recognizing him, verse 16. So um, in his power, he would not allow them to recognize that it was Jesus. And these men start saying, man, do you not know what's going on? Uh, man, th there was a guy, Jesus of Nazareth, and they call him, he was a prophet. He was a prophet. So 
Um, the, you know, do, do they realize who Jesus was? I, I don't know, but we start to see a little bit more in a few verses down. He was a prophet mighty indeed, um, but they crucified him. But verse 21, love this, but we had hoped, hoped, hope in Christ is always a good thing. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped he was the Messiah. We hoped that he was going to set up the kingdom of God. Remember those three, those four things that we talked about that Jews look for in their end times, right? That that they would be in a time of oppression, which is Rome. There was a prophet, John the Baptist, that there was going to set up a kingdom, right? They were hoping that Jesus was this guy that was going to set up the kingdom. They were hoping that he was the Messiah. They had expected him to be the, uh, the, the uh, Messiah. But now notice what it says. But he's been dead for three days. It's impossible now. Nobody comes back from the dead three days. The only people that's come back from the dead are the two people in which Jesus raised, which was Lazarus, which was four days. Um, but uh, and then you have this the boy at Nain, uh, the widow son of Nain. Um, but Jesus isn't there to bring Jesus back, right? So it's been three days. And in Jewish belief, they thought it was definitely over with. The soul has left the body. There's no way that's going to happen. Um, and so, um, uh, they, he goes on to say that there was women that were following him. They went to the tomb and when they did not find his body, they come back saying, they come back testifying that they've seen angels, that he was still alive. Um, and some of those who were with us went to the tomb and just found the tomb just as the women had said. Um, but we didn't find him. And now Jesus says to them, Oh, foolish ones slow of heart it wasn't a brain issue it was a heart issue uh slow of heart to believe all the prophets that have spoken you don't know the old testament you don't know that isaiah daniel zechariah had all said that the messiah would be killed and be resurrected are you kidding me you don't know this come on guys get this together right and then I'll, this is the best part uh, it was not necessary that christ should suffer these things and there's glory in verse 27 and beginning with moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all of Scripture, the things concerning himself. They got the best theological education that anybody has ever got, ever. He sat down and started in the book of Genesis and walked through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all the prophets, all the Psalms, all the wisdoms, and just showed how the Old Testament talked about the Messiah, talked about Jesus, talked about Jesus, talked about Jesus. Um, it's just amazing. You could only imagine what that would have been. Um, and as they were going, as they were drawing near to the village, it was becoming night and they were going to stop. And Jesus acted as if he's going further and they asked him to stay a little bit longer. And Jesus does. And so they, they're they going to eat supper, right? And he takes the bread, he breaks the bread, he blesses it. And instantly, boom, they know it's Jesus. Exactly what he did with his disciples at the Lord's Supper. They know, man, this is Jesus. Their eyes were open and they recognized him. And as soon as they recognized Jesus, he disappeared from their sight. It's crazy. It is a crazy story. Man, it is Jesus. And boom, they disappear. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn with us while we talked to us on the road while he opened up the scriptures that even though they didn't know it was jesus as they walked along they know it's jesus he disappeared and you know simon looks at cleopas cleopas looks at simon and says did you not feel your heart burning when 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 he was teaching the gospels like i just knew that that there was something different i knew that there was something going on oh my goodness it was jesus and so what happens it says they got up they returned instantly to jerusalem they found the disciples, they found the 11, and they were testifying. They were saying, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. So he appeared to two people, not just the women, but now we have Cleopas, we have Simon. Scripture says if there was two witnesses, it had to be true. Um, then he told them what happened on the road, that he broke the bread. Um, and as they're talking about these things, as these guys are telling the disciples, Jesus, poof, instantly appears in the room. And he said to them, peace. And they were startled and they were frightened. And they thought he was a spirit. They didn't think he was Jesus. They didn't believe he was the resurrected Jesus. They thought he was a ghost. 
And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do you doubt? And he basically saying, why do you not believe in me? Why do you not believe in my words? See my hands, see my feet, see all this, verse 41. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, even seeing they still did not believe who Jesus was. Have you anything here to eat? Jesus is hungry. He's hungry. He's real. It's his real body. It's flesh, stomach. He's hungry. You got some fish and they take some fish. Um, and he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you, um, that from the law of Moses, the prophets, they must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Not only did the two disciples on the road of Emmaus get a theological lessons, now Jesus with the disciples, the 11, and probably many other disciples in the room, um, he opened up their mind. What did he do? How, how did he do it? Instantly, he connected every picture as he did with those two on the road, Emmaus Road. Everything that Jesus has been telling them for the last three years he clicked it. He just made it work. And just, you can imagine these disciples were just like light bulbs, right? They're just like, boom, light bulb. Oh my goodness. And they're connecting things. It's amazing. Um, and so he did all this and he didn't do this for them to be smart and to be intellectual. He did this for what? Verse 48, you are witnesses of these things. So behold, I am sending you, right? I'm, I'm sending you. I'm not just sending you out, but I'm sending you what? the Holy Spirit to continually to connect these things, to be able to help us go on. I'm sending you the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, um, but stay into the city until you are clothed with power on high, the Holy Spirit. How many of you think um, as, as a believer that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you? How many of you think of the God inside of you is the power from on high? It's a good word right there, right? I mean, Holy Spirit inside of us, power on high. Then we end with the ascension in verse 50, and he led us out as far as Bethany. He's back on the Mount of Olives. Uh, remember, they're in Galilee. So he leads them down, um, take a couple days to walk, and probably taught and did all kinds of things. But now they're back on the Mount of Olives. And he lifted his, um, lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And as he blessed them, he started to ascend, carried into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Um, and we're continually in the temple blessing God. When they're in the temple, they're just not blessing God. They're just not thanking God. You better believe they're teaching. They're preaching. They're witnessing in the synagogue, in the temple, um, about what Jesus has done. Man, this is a great book. Um, I, I, I really love Matthew, probably my favorite, but Luke is right up there. Just some great um, insights on this. But the road to Emmaus, it's the best. I hope, I truly hope. Um, you have enjoyed this. I hope you are getting something out of this as you have now read the three synoptic gospels. Um, they're called synoptic, which is the word same. Um, they're not all same. We've seen some, something that's in Matthew might not be in Mark and Luke or something that's in Luke might not be, uh, but they're all kind of the same, right? They're just kind of the same events from three different reporters to three different audiences. Um, but now Tomorrow, we're going to start John chapter 1. John chapter 1 is another gospel. We're going to read about the ministry of Jesus, um, but it is completely different than anything that we read. And so um, it, it is good. It is deep. Oh, it is so deep. Um, but I think it will illuminate some of the things now that we've read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, because we have read those, when we read John, we will be able to go back and think about the words and the places and what the people said in the Synoptic Gospels. So I hope and I pray that you're with us uh, for at least one more gospel. And then you can say you've read all the gospels. You've read literally the life of Jesus Christ. And so you are almost there. Uh, you are three quarters of the way. I hope you are continuing with us tomorrow on John chapter one. God bless.